In prior demonstrations, we've gone over connections to the data where we actually just imported a spreadsheet for our data set and we're using that for our sales orders data. We then explore the data with the Explorer tool. And now we're going to tell the story with a storyboard. From the home screen, you can select Tell Your Story, but you can also use the menu at the top left to select Stories. When you go this route, it initially shows a list of all the stories you have. The public option here will display which stories are shared out publicly. My stories will show the stories you're working on that perhaps have not been shared out publicly yet. And then the Shared With Me option will display stories that have been shared out to you or to groups you're associated with. So going back to all now. You can see when it was created and when it was last changed. And if you want to launch the story, you just need to click on it. Above this, you have a couple different options to search, refresh, and so on. We'll click the plus sign here to create a new one. The first option that comes up asks how you'd like to start, either by importing new data, adding a grid, or adding a canvas. We'll start the story by adding a canvas. Okay, so here we go. At the top we see this is titled New Document 1. So we can use this menu to save it as something more appropriate. Now to add an object to the canvas, we can add charts, geo map, a table, and so on. We'll start with an image. So we can choose to upload an image here. We have a lot of other options across this top toolbar that you can look into at another time. We'll go right to insert, charts, tables, input controls, and all these other options, but we'll choose to insert a chart. We'll choose an existing model and then select that sales orders data. Initially, the chart won't show up with anything, so we go over to the Builder panel where we can change the chart structure and some other things. We need to add measures, so we'll do that starting with current year net value and then prior year net value. Then for dimensions, we'll choose order creation date per month. Now you can see our months broken out, showing current year and prior year. Now we can also see this doesn't really make sense to show in this way, so we'll go back to the builder and change the chart structure to show trends. Now that's a bit better, but this is still kind of crazy because we're not seeing months in a rational order, so I'll adjust that later on. If you look back at the builder, you have many other options scrolling down with filters, variances, reference lines. For right now, we'll leave all that as it is. Hovering over this, we see a small panel displaying some additional options. This is where we can change the sort and get our months to show in the correct order. Now we can look through here month to month and see how it compares current year versus prior year. You'll see when hovering over each of these months, the data points will highlight to make it easier to read. This is a pretty good way to read this type of data, but we can also go back into the builder and consider other options. If I go under comparison, I can try combination, column, and line. That looks a bit different. Now I can go a bit crazy here and in measure, drag the prior year down from column axis to line axis. Now we can see that going month to month, I see current year's numbers on the bar and then prior years represented with the line chart. Hmm, interesting. Let's step away from Builder and perhaps adjust some more detailed aspects. In this drop down menu, we can change from Builder functionality to something else like formatting. We can try changing the background color and adjust that, or not. We can edit the layout if we want the logo behind or 
beside the chart that can be changed. If we want to change the scale under chart properties, we can do that. We can change the formatting on the axis. We can adjust the font and color. A lot of ways we can change this here. All right, now let's create an additional data model. We can choose the menu in the top left, choose modeler and models, and then within this screen, we can click the plus sign to add another model. Select the import from file. We're actually using the same file that we used earlier, but now we'll select a different sheet within that file and wait for it to load. The spreadsheet is now loaded into the model, so let's first change the name here. And now let's run through dimensions and measures to ensure they all line up. We'll skip ahead here since this was previously covered. And let's create model. Once the model is completed, we're brought back to this screen. We can set the aggregation type to measure sum for each, and for units and currencies, we'll update a couple of these here, and then save the model. Now let's navigate back to stories. We'll see the previous story we are working on, sales order patterns. From here, we'll create another chart, selecting insert from the menu, existing model, and now select back orders, what we just imported. For this new chart, we're not as concerned with trending numbers, so we can set this as a bar chart. Then under measures, we'll select back order value. For dimensions, let's display this by sales org. All right, now we have a quick list of back order values by sales organization for this point in time. Next, we want things to be pretty, so let's do some formatting. Then after that, we can add some charts uh, below as well. If we select a chart here, we'll do this one in the right panel. We'll see some formatting options for this specific chart. We can adjust the orientation for the bar chart, making it horizontal or vertical. We can do some other things, and we can adjust fonts as well. Now we'll go back over to Builder. We see back order values in the chart, but it might be nice to add a tooltip measure to provide more detail. I can do that here by selecting back order quantity. Now, if I hover over, I can again see the back order value is, in this case, 833, but the quantity is showing as 10. So there are 10 pieces back ordered. So that gives me a little more insight here. So back to formatting, you can see some additional options here pertaining more to what we want to show and hide. We can decide not to show the title, for example. We can play with a couple other things here as well. Now that I hid that other title, I can go back in and add my own title, which will be easier to control. Under the plus sign here, I'll choose text. I can format this a, a bit, center it, type in what I want it to say. All right, that looks better. I can come to the other chart and make similar adjustments to the formatting. So now we're looking at a prettier version here. We have one storyboard that shows data from two different sources. To add something at the bottom here, go back to insert another chart, existing model, sales order data. We'll go back through this process again for adding measures and dimensions then adjusting a type of chart. Then we'll add a title and do some other formatting and adjustment. Now we can see net sales by distribution channel, breaking out sales to distributors, e-sales, or direct sales. Now let's say we want to look at net sales in a couple different ways. We don't need to reinvent the wheel and go through the whole insert process over again. We can 
pretty easily here choose to duplicate this existing chart for net sales by distribution channel and then change the dimension. So instead of looking at distribution channel, we can choose sales group. We can then copy the other title and update to show net sales by sales group. And once more, we can do the same thing, duplicating this chart, and then updating it so we're looking by material group. This really fills out our storyboard now. We have current versus prior year net sales with a trend line shown here. We have back orders by sales org and some pie charts breaking out net sales by distribution channel, sales group, and material group. Now what we'll want to do is link these together so if, for example, we click on a specific month in this chart, it will update what's displayed in the others. This isn't a long process, but it's a bit more in-depth than what we want to cover in this basic demonstration. So in short, we'll select a chart, go to linked analysis, adjust some settings, selecting which charts we want linked and which ones we want excluded. And in this case, we'll exclude the current back orders chart since that's just a snapshot. We don't want to dynamically update here. Now, in here, we can select March, wait a second, and we'll see all the below pie charts adjust accordingly. We can then delete that filter and select another month like July and watch it refresh again. Also, it's worth pointing out that when we have a specific month selected, we can hover over other months and it will tell us the percentage difference in net sales between the two. We can also select another month so it updates the filter to include, in this case, both July and June and update the linked charts accordingly. Instead of clicking to remove each filter, I can just click outside the chart and it will reset everything. Okay, so now we have a full storyboard conveying a lot of information. It's interactive and it pulls in multiple data sets. We can now save this and save it as a public storyboard so others in the organization can access it.